How was I gonna start this video? Today we're gonna watch one of the biggest cinematic achievements in human history. That's right, 2025. The year the world was enslaved by a virus. Well, we can't watch a film on this. This is not proper. We need a screen. And I guess I should also take a bit of a precaution before I say anything about this fabulous director. There we are. 2025, the year of the world was enslaved by a virus or something like that. It was, it's gone through like five different renames, was directed by Joshua Wesley, a pedophile that dated a 14 year old when he was 24. And actually he's still continuing to date that person up through her 18th birthday. <laughs> Yeah, as if you couldn't guess already, he's German. Because German pedophiles are either an extremely common thing or just a weird coincidence on this channel. Yeah, it's, it's fucking amazing what five euros can get you on Fiverr. Oh. Holy Christ. Don't do this. If you're making a movie, don't inter introduce it with like text that's lazy no matter what. But if you're going to at least try and put a bit of effort into the presentation, this literally looks like the default zoom text you get in iMovie with Bond Shift font, which is a extremely tacky font that I used to like a lot, but is getting really old. And this film's already ruined it for me. So if you're thinking about using Bond Shift, don't use it anymore. It's fucking dead. And this film killed it. See, a much more intelligent way to start this film would be to show the struggle of this guy being a Christian in, in communism. Communism meaning wearing a mask so you don't kill people. Just like how the Soviets suffered. By showing that, you could show on like a billboard or calendar, maybe as he's walking out the door the year 2025, you could see him maybe called like epithets or something. You know, something like that. That'd be intelligent. That'd, that'd take a little bit of effort, but it would not fucking take you out of the immersion. This is fucking amateur. It's not like it's off-brand for Germans to hate communists anyways, so I, uh, you know, they don't really need their reason. The virus changed the world. Communism is all over the place. A global state developed. Meetings are illegal. Traveling is illegal. Christianity is illegal. No! Yeah, this guy is a pedophile and a Christian, as if those two things are different these days. Uh, what am I saying these days? They were, they, they were never different. Look at that fucking glare on that windshield. I'm not sure if this was obvious or not, because from this footage, you would not be able to tell. This is a chase. He's being pursued by the police. It is so fucking poorly executed. You do not show a chase theme scene through static angles and drone shots because if you change the music, it'd be just like you're advertising the next Volkswagen Jetta. How do you make a chase scene boring? This is how, if you were, if you're a director and you want to include a boring chase scene into your movie, uh, don't have shaky handheld cams. Don't do anything to have some sort of sense of urgency. Just drive your car up and down the same stretch of road at a very peaceful speed. And there you go, you got a boring chase scene. By the way, he's not being chased because he's a pedophile or anything. He's being chased because he's Christian. While we're on the subject, can we discuss how obnoxiously generic this background track is? It'd be less painful to listen to a dubstep remix of panicked emergency calls made from the hijacked flights on 9-11, broken up only by the audio of the Jonestown kids succumbing to their cyanide poisoning and dying. I like the, the fucking Birdemic style firing of the gun. What the fuck? That's like a zoom that you would include in a fucking music video or something. That's so out of place in a movie. Have you ever seen a movie that has a transition like that? No, that is a fucking default plugin in Adobe Premiere. It's completely out of place. Oh, 
Okay, so the police were shooting at you just like that, but they had no problem with you jumping out of your car and sliding across the hood. Though real world police would not take that as well as these communist cops. Wow, you're really showing how bad communism is, peacefully taking this guy in after he fucking leaps out of his car. Sure I do. Those are mine. That's a felony. No, <laughs> even worse. It's how I treat him on those books. I think it does. They are from a time when life was different. The time when we could meet our friends, go to restaurants, celebrate, whatever. Yeah, they're talking like if Saber Spark had even worse brain damage than Saber Spark already does. I'm gonna be polite here and assume that because they're German that maybe English isn't their first language or maybe they don't have as much practice with it as they would with German compared to like the UK or the United States. So if they're not good at speaking English and acting in English, why make the film in English? I mean, despite your grandfather's best efforts, you know, a decent amount of the world still speaks English, I guess, so maybe that's why. But you just made a worse film for more people to laugh at. Where are these books from? Wouldn't the better question be, when are those books from? Shut the fuck up. Holy fuck. The guy goes on to explain that there was once a time, as if this guy wasn't alive for it, where you could go out and go to concerts and go to museums and go to public gatherings. But because of communism, that's all illegal now. Okay, no. You can go to concerts today. You can go to concerts without any sort of issue at all except maybe having to wear a mask maybe having to be vaccinated if they care, if they even check. You can go to the mall, you can go to a movie theater, you can do- you can essentially live your life the way it was before COVID if you're selfish enough, which plenty of people are already doing. I, I choose to respect the CDC guidelines because I'm not a selfish asshole that is going to fucking jeopardize other people out of my own idiocy, but it's not because I feel forced by the government to fucking stay inside. But there hasn't been a lockdown in two years. You do understand this, right? It is so fucking exaggerated. See, he shows some stock footage of like concerts and movie theaters and stuff. The stock footage goes on for like a minute, by the way. So we got like a two minute chase scene. We got 30 seconds of stock footage and we're four minutes into the film. The majority of this film has been Fucking nothing. It has not been content. A world full of peace, love, and ice cream. Do you just remember the best ice cream in the world? First love of peace, love, and ice cream. That's right, guys. If you haven't heard, uh, Chancellor Biden, unfortunately, actually banned ice cream. It's been outlawed now. I, I better not see any of you motherfuckers with some ice cream. You're gonna get your ass dropped. Come to think of it, why did he make the film 2025? If I was making a film set in the future, I would do something that's like, you know, far ahead of whenever we're gonna be alive, like Futurama being set in the year 3000. What happens is you get films like Death Race set in the year 2012, you get movies like 2012 set in the year 2012, and in turn people laugh at how nothing happened in the year 2012. It's just ridiculous. I do understand that Joshua's cop out for this film is that it's set in the future, it's set in a different world compared to now, but it's pretty obvious he's trying to make parallels to today. He's pretty obvious he's trying to say, oh, this is where we're gonna end up to. It's not some like ambiguous sci-fi flick or something. It's as if he genuinely believes that this is where we're gonna be headed in 2025 because you have to wear a cloth mask over your face. Basically, any other restrictions imposed by COVID are gone now. You could walk into most businesses without a mask. You can go into a restaurant without a reservation, without social distancing, without a mask. You can order whatever you want. In fact, basically the only places where a mask is required in my life is when I ride the train. That's it. And even then there's still plenty of people that ride the train and ride the bus without their mask. So it might as well not even be there in the first place. It is the definition of self-regulation. This book was the legal code of Germany before the global state developed and English got a world language. I received this book at university during my time in 2020, the year when everything broke apart. The state leaders came up with new regulations to repress the people and secure their power. Their excuse was virus, 
something they sold us as a super deadly killer virus. The state leaders started to take away our rights and our freedom. In 2020, there were regulations imposed in Germany that repressed the rights of people in Germany. Like fucking what? Staying indoors for two weeks? Wearing a mask to go inside places? I know I'm getting a bit repetitive and I'm, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself, but that's genuinely what he's fucking dooming over. See, I, when I sleep, I can't sleep anymore. When he sleeps, he can't sleep anymore. Why well, he look like Bunk, though? A thing I'm really growing concerned about is that th the entire film is going to be dialogue. Just shot reverse shot of fucking conversations that these twats are having about basically invented oppression. Because in reality, it doesn't exist. You can do essentially whatever you want without consequence. It's fucking made up. I see police officers. I always, like, get almost paranoid that they could catch me or, yeah, chase me if they find out who we are. Damn, I didn't know Joshua Wesley was such a pro ACAB guy. Those films about the countries in the Middle East where Christianity was illegal, those movies seem so far away. True. True, man! Well, five years later, we are exactly in the same situation. Have you expected that? Roy, I, I feel like we're the only Christians left in the world, but... It's, uh, fucking... It's really difficult to actually, like, even fucking watch this right now. It, it is extremely hard to actually get fucking content out of this movie that is so far been 95% dialogue. I, as I said, I won't give up this fight, and also this is not our fight. God will fight for us, and I'm sure that we find people who will fight with us. Yeah. You know, those Christians, they did not give up. They somehow survived. And it was illegal, and they met secretly, and they did not give up. And now we're so thankful for that they did not give up. I'm pretty sure it was hard for them too. Yeah, and they used the fish symbol to find allies. That's right, remember they they drew that one line and then the other person drew Finished the other the line. line. Yes. And then you got the fish. Yeah. Because we're just us two. But if we find more Christians and we will find find a lot of underground churches, that we could really change something. This can't be true, right? No, well, we had Thousands, maybe hundred thousands of pastors that did not molest children. So they decide that the best course of action is to vandalize property. Seems pretty left wing to me. Joshua. Damn, bro, this government is so oppressive that they spray painted the word hate onto a fucking drain pipe or whatever this is. <laughs> Gotta love them newfangled bloodless bullets. Oh, it's because she doesn't actually bleed blood, I guess. She bleeds high C. Police brutality! This film just got a star. And so far there hasn't actually been any communism or anything. There's no communist symbols. There's no like communist overworlds or something. You know, world powers tend to use insignias to symbolize their authority. I'm sure Germany should know this, but I guess he either didn't have the money or didn't want to put the effort into any form of world building. Nothing feels out of place at this at all. Could you imagine in A Clockwork Orange? Okay, we well don't actually need like symbols or anything. What I'm really asking is for just any sort of effort put in that makes this feel like something's gone awry because well, we had, we had a slow chase through a pleasant meadow field. We had a normal looking interrogation that was so fucking laughable it was difficult to take it seriously. Now let's compare it to a real film, A Clockwork Orange. In that film, things have obviously gone awry. The characters speak in a Russian-inspired slang. There's a lot of homeless people. Locations like the lobby of Alex's apartment building are completely destroyed. We actually see 
barbarous actions taken by authority figures, and the film is also fucking good. That film is a good example on how to show a subtly dystopian world. A realistically dystopian world. Not this. Because it has two modes. It either gets so exaggerated that it's impossible to relate it to yourself, or it's so underplayed and insignificant that it's hard to even take it seriously as a film. You don't even make the difference that this is a different world that we're looking into. This is the world that we're leading into with the uprise of communism. There is absolutely no sense of urgency in getting this bitch medical attention at all. Not only for the fact that we have no reason to care about these characters, but also they just are so passive about the whole thing. I'm gonna compare this to another film. Pulp Fiction. There's a scene in Pulp Fiction where a character named Vincent, who works for an extremely violent guy named Marcellus Wallace, has to take Marcellus Wallace's wife out to dinner. When they come back from dinner and Vincent goes into the bathroom for a bit, he comes out to find her overdosing on cocaine. And the scenes that follow that are extremely panicked and tense, not even necessarily because we care about the character's safety, but because we can understand why it's a tense situation. If his wife is fucking dead, He's dead. So he rushes her over to his friend's house and they all scream over each other and panic and give her an adrenaline shot, which fortunately saves her life. In this, I feel no threat that she's even going to die, that she's even gonna suffer any permanent injuries because the gunshot wound looks so goddamn minor. I don't care about these characters at all because they've given me nothing to relate to and nothing to care about. They just kind of drop me in expecting me to care about them by default, which isn't how character development works. Listen, I'm not gonna put it in so many words. I just don't care. You've not put the effort in to have me as an audience member care. It also randomly fades to black for some reason at several points. I guess it's better than the random zoom transition, but it's still a bit odd. Now other films do do this, but they generally tend to have a bit of space between fading in and out, like, you know, going to a new chapter or something. This fades to black like every five minutes or so. We're 15 minutes in and I think it's done it twice already. And it's not even to convey that like a character's blacking out or fading out or anything, you know, which would be intelligent and would make sense. It is literally just, they want to go to the next scene and they don't want to establish a transition to get to that scene. They fade to black like a fucking commercial break. So like five minutes later, this bitch is still dying on the floor because I guess she's losing a lot of cherry high C. Uh, we got this this lovely shot here that's not too high at all. I think the director must have been a little too high. <laughs> see, you see, if I were setting this shot up, I would have done it in like a three quarters angle. So you can see this bitch laid out, you know, writhing in pain from getting shot in the arm. It's not like a mosquito bite, like she's treating it. You'd see her laid out, you'd see the, the, the pastor man, whatever the fuck he is, sat out to the side talking to her and consoling her, and I guess she'd see, oh wow, Christianity's good, I guess. Super horrible, in my opinion, is that my leadership actually came down and they were going to make me, uh, make all of us actually recite, <coughs> uh, like the new constitution and like say it out loud and pretty much like swear into it. Oh, you have to read the new constitution out loud every day. Listen, wait till you hear about the Pledge of Allegiance, pal. Did that constitution add anything about pedophilia? Did it just remove all that? Joshua. Now there being a couple of badasses spray painting dead leaves. I guess this is meant to be them bonding, so... It, it, it is a necessary scene to have. I just would have included something a bit more rebellious than spray painting dead leaves. Especially considering you already showed them permanently spray painting on like a, a storm drain or whatever the fuck this is. Did you just have spray paint laying around and think that's the only thing people do for fun? So now here where they are approaching the gates of Doc Ow or something, uh, let's see what they do. No wait, first they have to spray paint a, a pile of firewood. That was a necessary scene to include. You already showed them spray painting. <laughs> What is with all the fucking fades? Remember going to the movies? Yeah. With your friends? Yeah. The, the rattling of the spray cans here is extremely distracting. It's actually louder than the fucking dialogue track. If it gets to the point where the auto-generated captions think that your dialogue is a pause, 
You're fucking up. Wow, that's powerful. Man, that's real powerful. I'm glad I can see it. I can see it real clearly here. Oh, no, I can just tell this is a bad guy here. Look at his drink. He's gonna do it. He's gonna hack his way into the Christianity. No, this is actually a Bitcoin miner. If you don't know what a Bitcoin miner is, it is someone that destroys the environment, wastes countries worth of energy just to make money. It literally just generates pollution to make money. As you can clearly see, communism and censorship in general is in full swing if you can easily search it on your own computer, literally on the first page of Wikipedia and Google Images. This montage was not necessary. There's so many shots in this film that are entirely just superfluous, like them randomly deciding to spray paint firewood, spray painting a fish onto leaves, the 30 seconds of stock footage we got that added nothing but just gave us a visual aid for what he was describing, I guess. As if we don't know what a concert is, it's just filler. And it feels like I shouldn't even be watching this in one sitting if it's just gonna be filler like this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a break here. This is gonna be part one. I'm gonna come back to this film. I really hope you enjoyed this video so far. Joshua Wesley. He's a dumbass. He's a pedophile, allegedly. Who fucking cares? He dated a 14-year-old at 24. He's retarded. Uh, uh, yeah, that's it. Alright, see ya.